Good morning, first grade, are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Good morning, first grade. <clears throat> morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises, early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hooray for the life of a Kona kid, tumbling in the sunlit waves. <clears throat> there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. I guess she'll die. There was an old lady who swallowed a spider that wriggled and jiggled and wiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I guess she'll die. Sing along. There was an old lady who swallowed a cat. Imagine that, she swallowed a cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and wriggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. I guess she'll die. What's next? There was an old lady whoo, who swallowed a dog. What a hog to swallow a dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wriggled and jiggled and wiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I guess she'll die. I think I forgot the bird. How absurd to swallow a bird. Anyway, I added her back in. Now we go. There was an old lady who swallowed a cow. I don't know how she swallowed the cow. She swallowed the cow to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wriggled and jiggled and wiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I guess she'll die. Last one. There was an old lady who swallowed a horse. She's dead, of course. So it's a funny way to end the song. I guess it's kind of a sad way to end the song, but as we know, it's just meant to be funny and kind of a joke, so. All right, but I love it because it's a rhyming song and rhyming is a really great thing to do. It's fun and it's funny and um, lots of other good things so all right so now we did the old lady oh yeah one two buckle my shoe so this time i'm going to whisper the odd numbers one two buckle my shoe three four shut the door five six pick up sticks seven eight lay them straight nine ten a big fat hen. I think I was whispering more than just the odd numbers. I think I was whispering the, uh, the other rhymes too. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, shut the door. Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. Ready for a rhythm clap? <laughs> Your turn, pop, 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 pop. My turn. <laughs> Your turn, pop. One more time. Your turn. All right, I would say very good, but I don't really know if it was very good or not. I just know that we tried. <laughs> okay, so now, beeswax. We did, we started making a G yesterday, or at least I started warming up my beeswax. I never did show you my G in the end, so there is my G. If you did not do that, it's a good time to put it back in your hand and warm it back up so that you can make this letter G. It's kind of like a letter C, comes all the way around from the top, goes around, and then it kind of takes a, it takes a sharp turn right there and gets really flat right in that spot. So there's a little bit of a corner in that spot where it gets flat on top, and the rest of it is all a curve. Oh, 
curve and one straight line. So there we have it again, straight line and a curve out of beeswax G. And we could easily change this to a lowercase g, I just realized. Interesting, if you take a, a regular G like that and then flip it upside down, it becomes a lowercase g if you just tuck that in a bit and lengthen that out. This part is like a fishing line going underwater, a little fish hook, and this is up like that. Lowercase, oops, I have it backwards to you, lowercase g. All right, so I'm gonna keep this in my hand and keep warming it up a little more and I'm going to make later uh, an E out of it, which is a little tricky. Um, I don't really wanna break a piece off and reconnect it, but I might end up doing that. But let's start by warming it up. And I have something else to show you. Actually, I, I can't do this. Um, I'm gonna, actually, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this in my hand, I'm gonna go over to the blackboard and I'm going to show you how to write the golden bird on your main lesson page that has your golden bird on it. So there is mine. I'll bring the camera over. And you can see that I've, I'll just show you the top half because that's all you need to see in this moment. And I chose, uh, Dark blue, I always like to write in blue, generally speaking. So find your uh, blue stick crayon, and I'm going to write the golden bird. And I'm going to do it just like I did here with the on top, golden underneath, and bird right there. Um, and if for some reason your bird is way up here, you can move it over to there. Um, just you can write the three words as long as this one's first, this one's second, this one's third, anywhere where they fit. You could even write the golden and put the word bird down somewhere lower. So I'm going to write it up here. T. H. E. This is one of the most important words to learn without sounding it out. You just look at it and you say the. So look at that and say the. And you can even say T H E spells the. Say it. T H E spells the. The, the, the. All right. So that one's the one you have to just memorize. Okay, golden. We get to use our G. Looks like I actually made this part flat too, didn't I? Yeah, I think that works well. Starting at the top for your O. L. We haven't learned that one yet. Or O. D, we learned that one. So far I have the gold. G old. The gold N. We just learned our E, though. I hope you've been practicing it. And N. Like that. The golden b bird. B. That's kind of a wide B, isn't it? There's an I in there, even though you can't really hear it. All I really hear is b bird. Er, we did that one. D ends with a d sound. Bird. What else ends in a d sound? Let's see. Dad. 
and well, dad begins and ends with a D sound, a D sound. Bird and herd rhymes with bird. And mm, let's see. Oh, well, I don't want to say that. I've got a silly one for you. You want to hear the silly one? Turd ends with <laughs> rhymes with bird. And um, let's see. Um, I heard a bird. I heard a bird turd. Oh no, <laughs> splat. Um, let's see. That's good enough for that, I guess. And let's talk about the syllables while you're finishing that. So the syllables, the has one syllable, golden has two syllables, and bird has one syllable. The, golden, bird. Yeah. All right, so finish writing that on your main lesson book uh, page. I think I heard Auntie Jackie arriving outside. So we will see if she is here next. Meantime, I did warm this up. And to make an E, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to break a piece off. That's what I'm going to do. Break a piece off. And I'm going to make a capital E. Like that. And then I'm going to put this piece in the middle and so squish it back in there. That's a challenging one to make out of beeswax. That approximates it pretty well. Sharpen my corners a little bit. It's hard to get them all the correct length, isn't it? So there's an uppercase E. If I want to make a lowercase E, I'm going to join those two back together and curl them all up. This is the only straight line. The rest of it is all a big long curve for lowercase E. And that is an okay lowercase E. All right. Somehow forming them like that with our hands might help us learn to write them well. All right. Auntie Jackie is here. Good Hello. morning, Auntie Jackie. Aloha to you Hi. as well. Nice you guys can see me. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Mr. Colton. Hello. Are we still in the letter G? G and E, yes. Good. Good. Well, I've been in the garden. Those have the same letters. Yes, they do. Good, good garden. Nice to see you. Thank you. Hey, first graders. Hi. Well, I hope that you were wondering about some things because that's the thing that I think is going to help you learn the most in your whole life, but also in the garden. So when you were wondering yesterday, what did you notice? I would love to hear you. And when I was uh, sharing with you yesterday, we were noticing um, things about branches and leaves. And so I brought in another one and see if you could practice that skill of wondering and noticing. So here it is. What do you notice about this set of leaves? What do you notice about its branching? What do you notice about their arrangement? Are they arranged a certain way? What do you notice? I'm gonna bring you close. What do you wanna notice? What do you wanna learn about this? Sometimes you bring it up close and you see more. I see that too. What do you notice? Get really close to this thing. It's, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. It's more fuzzy in this spot. Maybe you can see it. It's fuzzy. It's big leaves. They're soft. Some of you may know this plant because it was growing up the hill in a classroom up there, a garden classroom for some of you. And you played with the leaves, I understand. You started trading I'm sort of pretending that the leaves were different things besides leaves. This looks like something, when I pull it off on its own, I, I notice that this sort of looks, oops, pointy. Pointy like, maybe like an arrow, right? Pointy. I noticed that about this. I noticed it too has some things on the back, right? We call those leaf veins. It's 
strong leaf vein all the way down the petiole. So, what do you notice and what do you wonder? Is anyone wondering how did Auntie Jackie get that from the garden? How did she make it break from the plant? Did I rip it? It doesn't look too clean to have been broken. Did I use a scissor? Mm, it looks a little too wide for a scissor to cut it. I was able to use a tool. After you see me do this, I'll show you a little bit more about the tools that use in the garden. This is a hand pruners, and I like to use them in lots of situations, and that's why I wear them on my belt. So I have a belt, and I call this a scabbard, so I can keep my clippers in there. This is how I cut this one off to bring it to you. Okay, that's pretty clean cut. I'm going to put it back in the, in the scabbard. Some people call it a holster, and keep it safe that way. There are other garden tools that we use in grade one, and if um, you were uh, ever a gardener, you might notice some of these. So here's one of the tools that I like to use, and I wonder if you know the name of this tool. I call it a hand shovel. Some people call it a hand spade. So it's a small hand shovel. It helps me get into those smaller places. It helps me when I feel tired and I don't want a big shovel. This is a metal one. Sometimes there's plastic. And here's another tool. This one is called a garden fork, but like a hand garden fork. Does that remind you of a fork? Kind of. I would not want to use that for my lunch. Here's two tools that we use a lot in first grade. Hand, uh, hand shovel, and I call it the hand fork. Some people call it a scratchy tool. And it's okay with me that you don't always use the, the exact word if you don't remember it, but if you use describing words, then I'll probably follow you. So I call this a hand garden fork, but if you forget the name and you want to relate it to me, you can start describing it, right? Oh, the small tool, yep. The metal tool, mm-hmm. The one with fork, teeth, yep. The scratchy tool. So we use tools in the garden to help us get our jobs done. It helps us explore and wonder, and we have to, we have to be safe in the garden. So these tools we often use down low in the soil, but when we're carrying it, we have to carry it around the garden below our belly button. So that's my belly button rule. Your tools, when you carry them, keep them below your belly button. When you're working in the garden, keep them below your belly button. Because we get excited in the garden, and I've seen many kids be like, blah, 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 blah. And if it's back here behind your eyes, you may hit something or somebody. So we keep it closer and down below the belly button. Belly button rule two tools. Here's another one that some of you guys seem to like in the garden. And what is that? I often hear people say, what is that? This is a small garden tool and we use it to go down deep alongside the root of something and then pull it out. And this one, um, it often gets the name pokey tool. I like that one, right? Some say dandelion digger, but the one that I've been calling it all of my career is pokey tool. Okay. If someone like Uncle Barrow gives me a really proper name, I will use that too. I see there's a, did you notice at the end of this tool there's a little shape? See how that shape is? That helps us dig out the roots. Would you have some words for that shape? Wow, that's sort of like a reverse of an arrow. It also looks sort of like a double point, like maybe like the end of the tongue of a snake. The tools are really helpful in the garden. Keeping them safe is important and also taking good care of them. If they get left out in the rain, they get more damaged. Look at all that rust on that tool. We could probably scrub it up and put some oil sand on it, which we do in the garden together. We will take care of our tools together when we're back. And I like to carry them around below my belly button. I'm going to give you an, a look at one more tool that we like to use in the garden. But usually you have to wait till you're older. And you may get excited when you um, watch people use this tool or think about someday when you get very practiced at being safe that you too can use a tool. And this is our garden machete. They're, they vary a little bit. You might have a different machete at your house. But my machete, I like this one because it has two sides. One side has these teeth you could see. And one side has the sharp edge. And so the teeth, you do a different job and the sharp edge is different from that. Here's my handle. I have a little orange paint on it so that if I drop it in the grass or it gets left down while I'm struggling with like a big branch, I look down and I see the bright orange. We always, I always use two hands. I always make sure I have good feet. 
And um, when I carry it, I carry it safely. And I might even tell somebody, excuse me, I have a sharp knife behind you when it's this big guy and there's a lot of people around. This is for older people to use in the garden. Um, if you have family on your farm that helps you with it, it's a very important. It's a tool that's very important to have an adult with you. It doesn't even matter if you're good at it or your mommy and daddy let you use it. You always have to have someone nearby when you're using this. I have seen people get very hurt. This is much bigger even than a kitchen knife. Machete. Or from the language it originally came from, machete. So, machete. Machete. That's it for today, you guys. Notice and wonder, you will learn a lot. I noticed that Auntie Jackie has some tools and she's carrying them safely. And with that, I will see you tomorrow. Aloha. Thank you, Auntie Jackie. You're welcome, thank you. All right. Yes, my friend, I think I mentioned uh, the flower that I was showing you that my friend Pete told me was very, very poisonous. Uh, that same friend told me he has another friend, an older uh, person, who has been cutting coconuts open for 50 years. She has, been, she has been cutting coconuts open for 50 years with a machete, and sure enough, she just cut her finger right off just one day. Even so, even experienced people end up hurting themselves quite badly sometimes. I think she, they got her fixed up at the doctor, of course, but yeah. All right, <laughs> on that cheerful note, I want to take you over to the other side of the classroom where I have what's called the number corner. And I had been working to try and get it organized for a long time. And I finally have gotten it organized. But I, this is meant to, do, meant to be done one day at a time, like each day a little bit. And I'm going to do the entire month or as much as I can manage to squeeze in right now, right here, um, right now. So I think I'm gonna bring this a little closer yet. Okay. So there's lots of ways of representing numbers, aren't there? So we have here a number one, and it's got a hatch mark. Hash mark, hatch mark, uh, like the ones we've been doing on the board each day, which we did not even get to doing that yet today. And I'm trying to remember, did September start on a Sunday? I don't remember. Let me quick, quick go check. Today is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. I think it's the 29th. But the month of September actually started on a Tuesday. So I'm going to put my Number one for September 1st, that was a long time ago, on a Tuesday. And then this picture has two popsicle sticks. And there they are, two popsicle sticks. So we can take out some popsicle sticks and represent our number two like that. Number three has a little grid, which I will show you. I made one of these up already, but a three has a grid, and I see um, how many squares do I see all together? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 20. I can count those by fives. I see 5, 10, 15, 20. I see four little rows of five. And on three of those squares, I see three dots. And I have that set up, and I'll show you that in one minute. And then here's four. I have hatch marks again, and a number four in the corner. And I'm back to this orange card, aren't I? So I wonder if you know what is going to come next. Maybe you saw my little pile here, but I see orange, yellow, blue, orange. What comes next? And sometimes I need to say it out loud to myself. Some of you may be saying it's a color right now. Can you guess what it is? If I say it out loud, it helps. Orange, yellow, blue. Orange, oh, yellow would be next, wouldn't it? And sure enough, we have a one, two, three, four, and this one is, of course, going to be a five. And the yellow cards all have the popsicle sticks on them. So I would take out five popsicle sticks, which I have right there. And six would be what color do you think? Blue, back to the, back to the, um, uh, what do we call that? I can't remember, there is a name for it. 
I'll call it a table or a, a, a <laughs> I don't know what to call that. Uh, there's my seven. Now you see where I've joined my five together, just like we did in our hatch marks. What's next? What color is next? Let's see, yellow, or orange, yellow, blue, orange, yellow, blue, orange, sure enough, yellow. And we're back to popsicle sticks, of course. You could predict that, probably. There's our eight. And if you were here in the classroom, I would say you should be marking those down with the hatch marks, or I would tell some of, some of you to go and get some popsicle sticks so that you would see that there's eight of them. There's five there and three there. I know that that is eight. And here we're back to the blues and the little uh, thing that I don't know what to call. Nine of those. All but one of those on the one side is filled out. There's a gray side and a white side, and all but one on the gray side has a dot. That's what I noticed. I would be asking you what you notice. Now we're back to something different. Now we have hatch marks again, and they put those together. And that is 10. And we put them all together because we can count by tens. We lump them all together. We had the five and five, and now we have two of them, and that makes 10. And back to yellow and popsicle sticks. And like the popsicle sticks, now that we have more than 10, we put them in a bunch like that with some a rubber band. And I made that for you over there to show you in a moment. Now we're back to blue again. And guess what we have? Oh yes, now we've switched to red dots because we have 10 of the other one. So now we have a, a tray there with, with 20 possible on it. <clears throat> and 10 of them filled out with black dots and two extras, which makes a 12. Now we have 13, you know how to count, but do you know how to represent it with different ways? Let's see, there's 13, so we have the two fives, which makes 10, and the three more, which makes 13. 10 and three. And here we have 10 and four. See how there's 10 popsicle sticks gathered in a bunch, in a bundle, and a 10 in one bundle, and four more makes 14. That's why in the corner it says one four. The one stands for 10, and the four stands for the, left, the last four there. That, when you get the hang of figuring that stuff out, boy, you will be, I would say, golden in the world of math. So here we have 10 blacks, five reds, the, the 15 down there, that's the number 15 right over here. That one obviously stands for, I don't know if it's obvious, but at least to me, I've been doing this for so long, that, that one there stands for the one group of 10, right there, the black ones. Here we have 10 and five and one, 10 circled up there at the top, five gathered together, and plus one more is six, and that's why that 16 is a one and then a six, the one standing for that group of 10 at the top. 17, yep, group of 10 bundled up together. That's what the one stands for in the 17, which is made up of a one and a seven. And then we have the five and two, which makes seven. 10 and seven makes 17. Here's the 10 and eight. 10 black ones, eight red ones, makes an 18, as you can see, a one eight. And one stands for that group of 10. Here we go, some more. There's 19, group of 10 at the top, group of 10 at the top, and nine more. So one nine, one standing for that group of 10, the nine standing for all the rest of them. Two bundles of 10. That's why there's a two over there and zero extras. That's why we write 20 like that, two zero. And there we have 21. So we have two tens up at the top, and that's why that, that's why that two is right there. That's why we write it with a two and then a one, because the two stands for those two groups of 10 at the top, and the one extra. And here we go again. There's two groups of 10, 
That's what this 2 is all about, that first 2. Let me write 22. This 2 stands for two groups of 10. Whoops. And the other 2 stands for those two little guys right there. 23, the big 2, stands for the two bundles of 10. That's why it's 10, 20. And the 3 stands for those three little guys right there. There's a whirlwind of number sense learning. Hopefully you're getting the hang of what this looks like. There's 24, the 2 in that number 24. The 2 stands for that group of 1 group and 2 groups, the so 2 groups of 10. That always stands for how many groups of 10 we have. And then we have the 4. Two groups of 10 and five extras. That's why we write that two tens and five ones. Two groups of 10, that's two tens, and six single ones. Six ones. How funny to say six ones, isn't it? There we have two groups of 10 and seven extras. Almost to the end of the month. Two groups of 10, that's why that two is right there. 10, 20, and eight extras right there. Here's 29 popsicle sticks, 10 and 10. That makes 20, that's why there's two there because it's two groups of 10 nine extra ones, nine ones. Today actually is the 29th. So we get to stop there. <laughs> Hooray, I was about to keep on going. Tomorrow we'll do the 30th, and then we'll have to catch you up over the day break. So I wanted to show you what I did here. Here I have two popsicle sticks and that was for the second day of September. And then the hash marks I didn't do, but then the first one of these table-y things was a three, and so I put three of these things on there to match up with that card. And then we had four hatch marks, like is on the board over there, like we did. And then we had five popsicle sticks, and there's five popsicle sticks right there. And then we had six in a group like that. There they are, two, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. And then we had seven hatch marks, like what we did on the board. And then we had eight popsicle sticks, and that is over here. There's my five and three. So we got five and, and three is eight. And then we had nine in a group right here. We had nine in a group right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all but one of those tens filled right up. And then we had 10 hatch marks like we've been doing on the board. And then we had, and then we had 11 popsicle sticks. And that's what this is. Here's my group of 10. And here is my one. And then we had, let's see, what do we have next? We had 12, so that would be this one here, and then we switch to the red little counters. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, I knew that was ten already because I had ten of those there, and I had two red ones, and ten and two makes twelve, and that's why we write it with a one and a two next to it. All right. Now, lastly, we had uh, thirteen hatch marks, and then fourteen. Did I make one of those? I started to. Here's my ten of them right here. Here's my 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can do this at home where you take 10 of something and you gather them up into a bundle of some sort with a twisty tie or a rubber band. There's my 10. And this was going to be my, I was supposed to be 14. So there's my four more. So there's one bundle of 10. And then there's four left over. So I would write 14, one, four. One, four makes, four, makes a 14, if I write it like that. 
And, and then the last one I did, it's right here. This one has uh, 10 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 5, the number 1, 5 is a 15. I'll go and get it. So there's the same thing, 1, 5. And I did the same thing, except I flipped it around. Let's flip it around so it's the same as this one. So there's my picture with the 15, 1, 5. The 1 stands for that group of 10, and the 5 stands for that. So if we were in class, I would have you do this. So at home, you could do that. You could put 10 of something together and 5 of something in a separate pile and write 1, 5, and say that's 15. And you can count them to make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hooray. All right. I've been really wishing to get that number corner thing figured out for a long time. And there are other parts of it which I have not yet shown you. Whoopsie. Let's <laughs> dipped right over. Um, and I look forward to doing the rest of that with you as well. Um, either right here in front of you or in the classroom um, if we get back someday. I shouldn't say if. I'm going to say when. I'm going to say when we get back because if is just too iffy, if you know what I mean. All right, where were we? Had the golden bird. I had some many other things I wanted to do today, but of course time goes quickly when you are having fun and learning so many things. Uh, I had the stone cutter, the golden bird, E in the main lesson book. Okay, let's do the E in the main lesson book. So main lesson book out. Make yourself a border. I realize that from now on I'm going to make my borders a little wider than that. That way I can just go ahead and put my... underwater lowercase letters that go underwater right down into the border. I can feel okay about that. Let's see how this one turns out. The lowercase e does not go underwater, but I just have to do it a different way now so that they're all the same. Now, this is the thing now where I look at this line and I judge where is half. Let's see, is that half? No, this one's smaller than that one. Is this half? No, now this one is smaller than that one. If I put my finger about right here, now they're just about the same. And I'm going to draw, I could do a jotted line, or you can just imagine a line, or you can draw, move your finger across and just make it smudgy. And if you want to use your chalkboard instead of your main lesson book to get practice and then go back to your main lesson book, that would be okay as well. Let's bring this a little closer. So this is on the same main lesson page as the G. I will go ahead and put my background in. I'm very excited. Tomorrow at 12.30, 12.30, that's an hour and a half after lesson ends, we are going to have our Festival of Strength and Courage. And Uncle, uh, Mr. Learned rather, is going to uh, be the master of ceremonies, the MC. That means he's going to be the leader of the festival. And he is going to invite different, uh, some different teachers up to come and perform. Now, I will not be one of them this time. Uh, I did not have anything ready to perform. Uh, Uncle David and, and Miss Grosso are going to sing a song, I think. And I think the fourth grade teacher, uh, Auntie Mariah, as well as Auntie Chloe, the kindergarten teacher, are also going to do a song together. And Miss Sabin, the eighth grade teacher, is going to read a poem, I think. And special guest, the man who did, uh, I think he did, a, he did some beatboxing with uh, the fifth graders last year with my class. And he is very funny and he does a lot of um, noises with his mouth, you know, like <laughs> stuff like that. So that is 1230 tomorrow on this same place right here. And I will post it on the website once it's over as well. All right. So Festival of Strength and Courage. That's what we do every uh, September at our school. Here's the letter E. 
straight line down, practicing with your finger first to make sure you can make it nice and vertical, nice and straight, up and down. And then I'm going to make my, this one's gonna be not quite as long. And this one sticks out the same far, same distance as that one. There's my letter E. All right, now the trickiest one, I think it's probably the trickiest letter in the whole alphabet to write properly. This one stays down in this area. I'm gonna draw a very faint circle because it really does stay inside this circle and it is kind of a round letter. So I'm doing that just to help remind myself where this E is going to go and you may do that as well. I'm gonna take and draw a line straight across that circle like that. And then I'm just gonna go around the circle but I'm gonna end down here instead of finishing it. So I just leave this part open, and there's my lowercase e. So, eh, 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 e is for elephant, eh, eh, eh. The word, the letter e says its own name sometimes, e, 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 but usually let's think about it making an eh sound. That's the main sound we want to consider when we're talking about letter e. Oh my goodness, let us go so fast. I'm not going to do the uh, the um, form drawing in the main lesson book today. We'll think about that tomorrow. I would like to get to the drawing of the stone cutter, however. So we will switch gears and do the drawing of the stone cutter over here. I'm going to erase where it says the golden bird, and I will uh, make sure there's a picture of that on the website so that you can copy it if you didn't finish copying it. And now erase this. So you remember the story of the stone cutter from yesterday, I hope. Stone cutter. What did he do? Well, he made gravestones and cut beautiful pieces of stone out of the mountain to help people make their homes. And he was good at his work, and he had plenty of customers, and he was happy, happy, happy. He was. So then, however, he delivered a stone to a very rich man, and he saw this beautiful bed and all the beautiful things in the man's home, and he wanted those things for himself. He thought they were so beautiful. He just thought, I wish I was a rich man. And at that very moment, something amazing happened. What happened was the spirit of the mountain spoke to him. He had never believed that there was such a thing as the spirit in the mountain. He did not think that that was a real thing. But this day, the spirit of the mountain heard him and spoke to him and said, Your wish is heard. Rich you shall be. And when he went home, he saw that his home had been transformed into a very nice mansion with lots of fancy things inside, including the very special bed with the silken sheets and the golden tassels hanging from up high. So then he, I think I'm going to start drawing. So I'm going to get my purple block crayon and I'm going to put my drawing over there. So you can see how it's supposed to be oriented on the page. And I'm going to draw a mountain. So if this is my page right here, the mountain, I'm going to draw actually some ground first. So the rock, the bedrock, you cannot even see that on the screen, so I'm going to switch to a different color. But you should use your dark blues and purples. I have to use a different color mixed in so you can see it there. Boy, you can't hardly see that either. Um, and this is a purple and blue, and I've used some gold in my, in my mountain, in my ground, and even some green. If I move this, it will be easier to see a little more light coming in. That's about the length of a page, like that. And then I'm going to leave this space, about half the space there, 
So I can put the man in the house. I've got a little less than half over here, but I think I'll go with about half, so that there's room. And I'm gonna draw um, just a jagged mountain. You can jag it any way you want and just bring it up to the top of the page and then just fill the whole thing in. So I'm starting with blue this time, and that is fine. I added like four different colors to that mountain because I think it looks good if you blend it all together. So here is a giant mountain, and the little man will draw later in a moment. I'm gonna put some purple. I will use my gold. This is kind of a faded looking gold. There's places where like that. I'm even going to get some green because there is some green on this mountain, I think. You don't see my dark green. I'll have to use this light green. There's a little dark green. I don't like the way that looks as much, but oh well. And I'll go back over it with some purple one more time. Maybe you even want to, maybe you want to like put a little orange in there and blend all that together. And go back with some purple in the end. Mountains, when the sun is shining on them in different ways, they look all different colors. So there's my mountain. Make that one a little sharper looking there. Okay. The stone cutter was happy with his work, but when he saw and then he came and he got his beautiful house. There's my red. He was very happy. But as he was looking out the window, one day he saw a prince going by and the sun was shining on him, but he had an umbrella, a golden umbrella, being held over him by a servant. And our stone cutter, who is now a wealthy man, now said, well, I think I'd rather be a prince than this. I want to be a prince so then I can have the, someone hold a golden umbrella over me to protect me from the sun. And so he heard the voice, your wish is heard prince you shall be. And sure enough, he became a prince and he had tons of servants and they carried him around the town with an umbrella over his head. But still, sometimes when the umbrella wasn't there, he would get burned by the sun and he noticed, why should I have to protect myself from the sun? Clearly the sun is much more powerful than me. Now I wish I was the sun. Oh, your wish is heard, the sun you shall be, said the spirit of the mountain. And sure enough, he was the sun. And he sent down his rays down on everyone. Now we're going to draw the sun. I used gold, and I'm going to use a similar color here. And I'm going to draw the sun. And the sun beat down on all the world and made it so hot. So hot. This is difficult because now I want to draw a round sun. And it doesn't matter how big it is, because sometimes it looks big in the sky, and sometimes it doesn't look so big in the sky. And now I'm going to draw some lines out from it. And there's lots of ways of doing that. But this time I'm going to just draw some lines like that. The sun beat down on all the world. It made everybody sweating hot. All the crops dried up. The grasses dried up and everything dried up and our man was happy. Now I'm gonna go back over the middle part of this with yellow. The sun was so bright and so hot. Everyone wished for shade. Chalk, I'm gonna smear this out a little bit. And the sun was happy. But then one day, cloud came into his came into his sights. So now first I'm going to put the sun the, the sky. Take my blue, put it in between each one of these. And what do you think? If you go over the little yellow a little bit, it kind of turns it green, but that's okay. It doesn't really doesn't really matter. When the sky was clear like that, let's 
going to blend into my mountain a little too much. Let's take my green and give the mountain a little more definition on the edge here. Better yet, a little gold. The sun shone on the mountain. Clear, the sun beat down on everyone and warmed up the earth, but then it got too hot. Not enough rain. The sun made everybody's garden get wilty. I'm gonna leave this bottom area just very, very light. Super light. Super light. That way I can draw my man at the bottom. Alright. And then one day, suddenly, a cloud was there. I again used my dark purple. I'm going to use a different color purple so that you can see it better. And I'm going to make a cloud. That reminds me a bit of our form drawing that we were working on. And I need a big cloud here. Fill it in. And then you can take your black block crayon. And you could go over that a little bit darker, and especially in the middle. You might even take your gold and go around the outside of it a little bit because the sun does shine on that cloud. Blend that in a little. Down at the bottom. Maybe it's a little darker. And the rain cloud came and blocked the sun. Now the sun was very angry and said, well, how could that possibly be? How could my rays be blocked by a cloud? Clearly the cloud is more powerful than me. The people were so grateful for the shade and the sun became angry and said, I wish I was a cloud. And the spirit of the mountain said, if you wish you were a cloud, your wish is heard, cloud you shall be. And the cloud he was rained hard down on everything. I'm going to take my black. You're not going to be able to see that, so I'm going to use white. But I used black here, and I drew some kind of faint lines that you can see there to be rain. Blowing rain. Just do it part way down like that. And that way we won't interfere with the space down here where we're going to draw our house. And it rained everywhere, and there were floods, and the rivers overflowed their banks, and the gardens became muddy, and the roads became impassable, and no one could do anything, and the cloud felt very, very powerful. But then the cloud saw something else. A mountain. A mountain seemed not to care whether it got bright sun on it, or whether it got poured rain on it, nothing seemed to happen to it whatsoever. And so the cloud became angry again and thought, I wish I was a rock, because the rock seems like the only thing that is not affected, more powerful than all these things, and never affected by it. Well, the spirit of the mountain said, a rock you shall be, and became the mountain. He stood tall and proud and strong and knew nothing could affect it. But one day, of course, he felt a little chipping away down near the bottom where his feet were. He imagined, what in the world was that? And sure enough, he looked down and began to tremble because someone was down there, a mere creature of the earth, a mere human, down there chipping away at my feet. What in the world is going on down there? Couldn't believe that this little man right here, you can use a gold color, or if you have a brown, you can use a brown color. And I did make a little hat on him. Hopefully that's a traditional Japanese farmer, worker, tradesman hat. Probably it's not, but that's how we think of them at least. And 
Um, and then he's got one arm up in the air, feeling very powerful. And the other arm is down here. And then his body, just like that, just fill in a little bit of body. I usually think of a human being being drawn as two triangles. So you have the egg on the top, which is the head, like an egg shape. What upside down egg? It's a little bigger on the top. You know how an egg has a skinny side and a wide side? So the wide side is the top. So there's your head, egg shaped head. And then I don't really worry about the neck too much. I kind of just put the shoulders a little below there. And then I just draw two triangles. So there's the triangle of the upper body and the same size triangle for the lower body. And that can be legs, or you could put a, this, cross this up and say it's a dress. And then you can make it a little thicker here. And then the tricky part is making the arms long enough. The arms, check how long your arm is. Well, my arm goes way down to, you know, right there, almost to my knee. So if his knee was right there and his hips are right there, People often draw people with arms that only go down to their hips, but really it goes a lot longer. So there's an arm. I had one arm up and one arm down. I want to make the legs a little longer. Probably should. Put some little feet on there. Okay. And then I can come in later and just fill in that neck a little bit. All right. So now we're going to do that in miniature down here. I've got the part of it started. And I'm going to go and draw two legs there. And then I'm going to make them a little thicker and make them come together at the top. And I can bring them down as far as I want to make them long enough. His head's kind of big for that little body, so I can make them a little longer. And then I'm going to put some little feet on him. And that's about done, I'd say. Except I did want to put a little tool in his hand. That was rather tricky. I use my black stick crayon. Let me show you. There's my little guy. I made a, to my little, just a little black, like an upside down T coming off of his hand. And that was supposed to look like, I think I'll use white for mine. I think I'm about out of time, am I? Oh yes, just about out of time. So I just make a little T like that. That's his tool, T for tool. And I ball up a fist around it, around it like that, make a little, Make one up here too, it's hand in the air, fist in the air, feeling very strong and powerful. And then over here I built a house the same way. I'm going to make this one a little bigger than that, more than the picture. Let's pretend it's in the background, so even though it's a little too small for the man, you can pretend it's back in the background far away. And I liked making this traditional style, what I think of as traditional style Japanese roof. And a house like that. And then I will, and then I made, actually it would have been good to do the form drawing. I made these little things like that. Kind of like waves. I think of them as shingles. Don't forget the door. And then let's just go over this with some, with a little, little bit of color here. And we'll call that done for now. And, oh, I was out, out of the picture a little bit. And tomorrow we will write the word the stone cutter. And I'm probably gonna put that right in the mountain the stone cutter. I put mine along the bottom, but we can wait and do that tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here. I know that was a long lesson today. But we got a lot done. I hope you have an excellent day, and I will see you tomorrow.